Hi, everybody. Welcome to Afterburner. I'm Bill Woodle. Well, it's getting a little tough to be a light worker these days. President Obama is again under fire, this time for his trade of five top-level al-Qaeda operatives in exchange for what is more and more looking like a deserter, a collaborator, perhaps even a traitor. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now, I'm not going to mince words here. I believed this president when he swore to fundamentally transform America. I believe that statement alone is evidence that he does not love this country as she is or has been, and neither does his wife for that matter. I think the only America they're comfortable with is the one remade in their own image. Now, unfortunately for them, the American people in large numbers do love this country, so when this left-wing radical tries to, you know, actually fundamentally change America through his policies, the results are not favorable at the public opinion polls. And public opinion is, to this pathological narcissist-in-chief, the only polar star he really has. So to explain these missteps, he and his supporters are placed in a difficult position. They have to make a decision as to whether his latest fiasco was either evil or stupid. And they chose stupid every time. For example, as his first act in office, President Obama signed an executive order closing the detention center at Guantanamo Bay within a year. He ran, let us not forget, on a platform that called Gitmo a stain on America's honor. So, when the top terrorist at Gitmo, the architect of the 9-11 attacks that killed 3,000 Americans, that would be Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, was due to stand trial, a decision was made to have that trial in downtown Manhattan. Now that the president did not know about this until the day the decision was announced to the public by Eric Holder is simply not credible. But that was the story. Obama was not evil for taking the risk to hold such a trial in Manhattan to make a political point. He was merely stupid. He just had no idea what was going on. None. When Barack Obama claimed that most of the guns used in the horrific violence in Mexico came from America, he was roundly rebutted and humiliated. So. He decided to make his allegation true by authorizing Fast and Furious, which sent thousands of untraceable guns to the Mexican drug cartel. At least one, if not two, American law enforcement personnel were killed with these weapons, not to mention hundreds of Mexican civilians. Did the president, in fact, authorize this evil plan? No. Now, he didn't know a thing about it. He was just stupid, you see. One begins to wonder, though, why Eric Holder still has a job after authorizing such enormous decisions, such PR catastrophes, without the president's approval or even his knowledge. When the Benghazi consulate came under attack after months of repeated calls for additional security from its murdered ambassador, President Obama went out and told the American people for 10 days that this attack was the result of an obscure anti-Muslim movie on YouTube, even though he was watching the attack in real time, and that within the first three hours, the State Department, Defense Department, and the actual attackers themselves made it clear it was, in fact, a terrorist attack. He didn't know that he was lying for 10 days. Of course, that would be evil. He didn't know it was an honest mistake. He was just stupid. When he rolled out his Obamacare website to great fanfare, a $10 million piece of work which cost the American taxpayers over $900 million due to cronyism, well, he was told weeks in advance that it was going to crash. Launching something that you know is going to fail is criminally negligent, and it would have landed him in jail if he'd worked for an evil corporation. But of course, working for an evil corporation would be evil. So he didn't know the site would crash. He was as stupid as the rest of us, and as surprised as well. And when he said, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan, despite the fact that his legislation required virtually every insurance plan in America to become more expensive, well, that wasn't him lying. He was just as shocked as you were. Shocked. Just kind of uninformed, I guess. When the IRS was weaponized against the American people based on their political affiliation, you know, the kind of thing that brought down President Nixon, well, that wasn't at his direction. He said there wasn't a smidgen of corruption in the IRS. Now, that was a bald-faced lie, but not the evil kind. It was the stupid, uninformed kind. Likewise, despite campaigning on improving the treatment our returning soldiers were getting at the hands of the Veterans Administration, the fact that 40 soldiers died waiting for care in Phoenix alone doesn't mean he didn't give a damn about the soldiers because he was, oh, I don't know, too busy picking basketball championships or playing golf or congratulating gay athletes. No, he learned about it in the news, and boy, was he angry. And now, after that scandal, he decides to trade five of the most deadly terrorists we have at Guantanamo Bay, which remains open not out of malice but out of ignorance, of course, in exchange for Bo 
Bergdahl, a man held by the Taliban for five years who, by most accounts, was a deserter, a collaborator, perhaps even a traitor, and who cost us six or perhaps 14 actual American soldiers searching for him? Well, the fact that the president needed a photo op with a military family after the VA scandal would make this as evil as any evil thing that he's ever done and that we know he did in fact authorize, but he'll plead stupidity and he'll get away with it. But not completely, not this time. These things are starting to add up, you see. Now, I think it's showtime now. I think this Birdall scandal is really going to hurt him as the details come out. So, is Barack Obama evil or is he stupid? I think the answer is yes. Yes, he is.